power flushing, rust, magnetite and problems that you might get in a central heating system when they block up or if the radiator's out warm, etc. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I've got Stephen here from the Power Flush Association and Stephen's going to go through a few tips and talk about power flushing, talk about mains flushing and all different types of flushing on central heating systems and, and just really give you some tips on what to look out for. So yeah, let's uh, let's go over to Stephen and he can tell us some more. It'd be great if you could also put a thumbs up on the video and also if you could add a comment below and click the bell. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. So today we're gonna to talk a bit about rust um, in central heating systems, where it comes from and the different types you get and how you can deal with those. So where does rust come from? Rust is the radiators rusting in the central heating system. And that rust then spreads through the system, all the pipes into the boiler and it builds up over time. Now, if you have a magnetic filter, obviously it can catch it and hold on to it so that you can clean it out and it prevents the system from blocking out. But it doesn't always work or people didn't fit the magnetic filter. So there are different types of rust. You have rust in copper pipe systems. Now, rust in, in, rust in copper pipe systems tend to stick onto the sides of the walls in the pipes and it stays there. It looks like a mud and when you take water samples, it tends to be really dark. Now, when you have plastic pipes on a system or rubber hoses, it is very different. The, the rust is, a, is a, built up as a flake and that flake tends to lay down in the pipes and block the pipes up just before the radiators. When you take water samples, it tends to be clear and that kind, kind of throws off engineers a lot. When they take a water sample and they see it's clear, they think that there can't possibly be a rust build up, but um, they still need to be cleaned even if the, the water sample is clear. So we would encourage people to go read the British Standard BS7593. It lays out quite broadly some of the cleaning techniques, but I'm going to give you my opinion um, on the different techniques and how they work. And uh, you can make your, your own decision on that. So the first one is chemical cleaning. Chemical cleaning is when they take a system, you put a chemical in it to break down the rust. And then after a certain period of time, you just drain the system down under gravity and uh, it gets rid of the rust that way and you can refill it. It is not that good uh, when there's serious buildup of rust because you are not disturbing the rust, um, which is quite heavy um, under, under, you know, under any pressure or anything like that. Then the next one up is mains flushing. That's when you connect into the system with mains pressure and the mains pressure is forced around the system. Um, because you're connecting on one side, you can, you can only go in one direction unless you, you connect on the other side and then you can go in both directions. It is still a bit clumsy. You can't, you can't focus it that well. You can't deal with blocks that well. Um, the next one up from mains flushing is power flushing. That's when you cut into the system and you connect an actual machine. With the machine, you get more flow. You can change your flow from flow to return. So you can move, you can move uh, through radiators better. You can disturb the rust better. You can focus it down better. Uh, you also have a magnetic filter on your system so that when the rust passes it, it gets removed. Um, you, you can add chemicals. Uh, the chemicals will help break it down so you can clean faster. You can also heat the system, which uh, helps the chemicals break down the rust faster. And then from power flushing, um, we also do powder flushing, which is when we add uh, pellets in the pipes and we shoot it up to break up and scrape clean the system. Um, it works it works well and works fast and we normally use it when power flushing has already failed. Now we're going to talk a bit more about the problems you get with central heating systems, uh, how they block, why they block and where they block. So the first one is scale. There's a, a big misconception around lime scale being the main reason central heating systems block and that is that's not correct. Lime scale buildup is found on the plate heat exchangers on the hot water side where 
mains pressure water comes in cold and then comes out hot uh, because of the heat being transferred into it. Because of the volume of water flowing through that part of the heat exchanger, you can get a lime scale buildup over time. However, on central heating systems, it's the same water just being pumped in a circle. So there's not enough lime scale to build up because the water is not continuously changing for new water. So the problem we have with rust and how it builds up and where it builds up. So the rust build up commonly uh, in radiators uh, is lying in the middle of the radiators. Uh, over time, the, it blocks off the flow on the bottom and the heat starts flowing around the top. So that makes the radiator less efficient because it doesn't heat all the way to the bottom. So the easiest way to clean that is to turn off all the other radiators to the system and then focus the flow down to just this radiator. Um, and because you have this increased flow through it, the rust will be uh, blown out and uh, moved back to the, the power flush machine and get stuck to the magnets. Now, if you have the uh, old copper pipe system where you have this mud rust, um, that, that's pretty much the only issue you're going to have. But if you have plastic pipes or rubber hoses on your system, you're going to have these flakes. And these flakes, if this was the flow pipe to the radiator, the flakes come up and they hit the valve and they'll back up all the way down the pipe. Um, this can be very hard to clean because the longer this block is, the harder it is for it to shift. And um, that can be quite difficult. Uh, the easiest way that I find is that if you are in reverse effectively, so you're pumping up the return and down the flow, to, to push the flakes backward is easier than to try and push it back into the blockages. The other, the other problems you have with these flakes is that they come up into your plate heat exchanger and they go into these really fine uh, little openings here and they easily block them up. Again, to flush them, the easiest would be in, in reverse uh, and that, that'll flush them out. Um, obviously, when we powder flush, it's, it's kind of easy because we can just uh, put the pellets through and it'll just break them up and shoot them out. You can also use chemicals. You can take it out. Uh, you can add chemicals to it and let the chemicals dissolve it and then flush it out under mains pressure. That works quite good. Then if you have rubber hoses on your system, the rubber hoses makes a, quite a thick type of uh, flake, a rust flake. And... Um, not sure why that happens but uh, we tend to find that a lot in systems uh, normally in heat exchangers when the flakes have already moved on into the plate heat exchanger or into the primary heat exchanger um, or they can just be sitting in the actual into the actual hose and if you squeeze it you can actually hear it being very very crunchy and, and that's the flakes breaking down as you're squeezing onto them when you have uh, micro ball pipes that are plastic. You got the same the same issues that I described earlier. It's just that when you have a micro ball pipe coming up, they block even easier because they're much much thinner and the flakes are quite big. So a really small blockage could easily stop a radiator from working. And um, then you obviously have the the primary heat exchangers in the boiler, where uh, once the flakes get in there, this effectively um, blocks it up. Or blocks the flow to a, a high percentage of the heat exchanger and then because you're not getting enough flow the boiler overheats and shuts down all the time the easiest way to deal with that is to connect onto the actual boiler uh, onto the flow and return to the boiler and flush the boiler by itself um, and not to try and, and clean that as part of you cleaning the whole system so i want to talk a bit more about the common issues that you can get that will indicate that you need to have your system cleaned or power flushed so first one is obviously if your boiler is locking out all the time, you need to reset it often. That can indicate that there's a rust buildup and that you need to have your system cleaned. The other one is if you have cold radiators or lukewarm radiators. Um, another one is that the, the H or the downfeed connection is blocked. Uh, there's a simple test for it. You use a magnet and you just test on the pipe and if it sticks, it's attracted to the magnetite inside the pipe because obviously copper does not attract, uh, a magnet is not attracted to copper. Um, it's important to test this whole end here 
and a little bit up here just to make sure it's not blocked but the main buildup is normally here and also test this bit here so the the other ones you can get is a pump a pump that is blocked and uh, normally a blocked pump indicates that it's blocked by being noisy because it can't move the can't move the the rust it can't move the water so it tends to be a little bit uh, more noisy than normal um, a handy tool that you can use is a test kit because you can't always rely on the water color is use a test kit test the water and see if you need it but i would say the most general rule is if you're going to change your boiler or if you haven't uh, cleaned your system in a long time just haven't have it cleaned because there'll always be a rust build up to some degree thank you very much for that Stephen. if you've got any questions please put them below and we'll try and do a follow-up video and the important thing for me from this video is to try and put over to people about flushing systems um, how important that is especially with new boilers i went to one the other day which were a fairly new boiler in fact it was about i think it was about three months old or so it was not not old at all and it were it had been installed by a big company and that big company had told the customer that they don't do flushing and then they phoned me to go and have a look at the system and the system was mucky so in my opinion we always need to be flushing the heating systems and also test them afterwards as well so there's a new test kits now that you can get to the new british standard 7593 2019 and now we have to also do that on servicing so if you're going to go do a service for a customer as well we should also now be testing the water so you need to do a water sample and there's all different types of test kits so obviously Eddie do this test kit Fernox do test kits Sentinel do test kits as well and and there's other the other brands as well scale master also you can send lab you can do lab tests as well where you send a sample in so if you're a if you're an end user if you're a customer and you want to know more if your system needs flushing then you could go to you could go to a merchant you could buy a test kit you could do a water sample and you could send that off and that would tell you then if you do need a power flush or not and then you can obviously um, have your system flushed yeah i think that's it for this video if you as i say if you've got any questions please put them below and and thank you very much for watching